We are live. Hello, hello. This is Frank. I'm your host today. And welcome to uh, Cooking with Chef Frank. And uh, I'm so happy we are here today and you are here today. Um, today we're going to cover quite a lot of topics. Um, one of the reasons is we got actually quite a lot of members in our private Facebook group, which is um, my plant-based, uh, my whole food, my sorry, my whole food plant-based journey. This is what life is all about. Okay, uh, so uh, last night I saw in the uh, question and answers in my group, we had so many questions, and I'd like to cover um, some of them, give you answers, um, because it's very important that that you know that you support it. You're in the group. Uh, with a lot of other people. Um, a lot of them are already vegans. Um, a lot of them transitioning to a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And some of you haven't even started yet. They're trying to, you're trying to uh, feel it out if it's good, if it's something for you. Um, I want you to know I'm always here for you. Um, look at me at your, at your private coach or chef. Uh, I'll be always there to answer your questions. I apologize if I don't get as fast to all the comments because um, I have gotten so many comments between Instagram, Facebook, uh, my Facebook page, um, my two groups which I have. I have one is the uh, Whole Food Plant Based uh, private Facebook group. Um, all together, it's more than 2,000 comments. So it's, it's quite a lot to keep up with this. But I do my best. And I'm here to serve. I, I love what I do. I, uh, I actually help people uh, transition into a whole food plant-based lifestyle so they achieve better health um, and weight loss. So that's what I do. I love, love helping. So please do not hesitate to ask your questions. But before we start, um, if, uh, if you could introduce yourself with your name and where you're from, so I know you're there, um, that would be great. So uh, I know who we, are, who we have here today. And uh, okay, so today we are going to cook uh, a red, red beet hummus with white beans. And then I'm going to do a air fried falafel. And then I'm going to do a dish which is really impromptu. I don't have much prepared for that. I want you to see how fast it is to produce a dish. So the reason why I do this is um, I got so many questions about um, where are my recipes? Where, where can I find recipes? And I know there are millions of recipes out there on the internet, um, but they're not all whole food plant-based. So there's, but beside that, when we are hungry, we want to cook something, so we check what our what we have in our fridge area. Um, sometimes we are so frustrated that we say, you know what, I'm not in the mood to cook. I don't know what to cook. I go out, and that's when we fail our whole food plant based journey. That's I mean, it's okay to fail that day. There's nothing wrong with that if you go out and eat whatever you want to eat. But once you come back the next day, um, it's important to get back on track. If you if your goal is transition to a whole food plant based lifestyle, so that is really really important. It's okay to fall off the diet, but again, it's not a diet; it's a lifestyle. So, but it's important to get back uh, on your feet, so to speak, and uh, just go you know try to eat as healthy as possible. Because our goal is in the end to stay healthy to avoid chronic diseases, because we all know chronic diseases are created by animal foods. And there's, there's so many studies out there. Um, I don't have to go into that. It's, it's uh, proven now by so many doctors right now, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell, um, Dr. Ornish. There's, I cannot tell you how many doctors who are already plant-based since, since decades, and they have proven that a whole food plant-based lifestyle is one of the healthiest 
uh, ways to live. And um, so that's what I do. And I'd like to help you with this. So every one of you can achieve the same. Just to give you, um, you know, some of you don't know me. I, uh, I'm a chef. I, I worked over 30 years in, in Europe, in the Caribbean, here in New York. Um, so I, I transitioned to a, a plant-based lifestyle. It, it is, I can tell you, it's, it's, it's a story. My, my mom um, was always overweight and I, I tried to help her. So because I was a chef, I, I knew, you know, I knew certain things which are healthy for you and I tried to give her a diet. She, she would lose weight, but then she would gain it all back and more. So in the end, I, I realized, hmm, there's something doesn't work here. Then, I, uh, then she, got, uh, she got sick of uh, this breast cancer and then Alzheimer's. And uh, obviously she died from Alzheimer's. And uh, I was frustrated. So, and then a lot of my uncles and aunts uh, got sick and died from similar MS. Uh, diabetes, you name it, they had it. So I said to myself, wow, what is this? Right? So at one point it's gonna be my turn. And to make a long story short, I, I went to the doctor, checked my, uh, you know, got a checkup and I wasn't fat, uh, not at all, but, and I exercised maybe once or twice a week or three times. So, and the doctor said, hey, your, your cholesterol is at 260. I said, oh, wow. And he said, if you don't do anything, well, then uh, I need to give you pellets. And I said to myself, wow, this, you know, this cannot go on like this. And that's when I said, I have to stop this. Because in a restaurant where, you know, where I work, where I used to work, I had everything. I had my steaks, my croissants, my fish, my, my seafood, and I would eat. I, you know, I'm not someone who is, you know, leave the good stuff there. So I would eat. Um, and sometimes I couldn't say no to the cross on there, the muffin in the morning here. So that's why I said to myself, that's it. Uh, I researched so many uh, nutrition books. I, I read one book after another from all the leading doctors who, you know, I, I did the paleo diet, I did the Atkins diet, I did the Bulletproof diet. I, I tried them and initially I started to feel good. But then after a while, it, it didn't work out. I didn't feel the way I, you know, I wasn't satisfied. That's when I said, you know what, I'm going to let go of all the plant-based, uh, I'm sorry, the animal foods. And once I transitioned to a whole food plant-based lifestyle, I cannot tell you how, what a difference it made, how good I felt. I mean, I was running, I had a pace of 10. And then after about four weeks, I would, I would run, and then I said to myself, you know, let me run a little faster. And there was no limit. There was no limit to it, how fast I could run. And I could maintain that speed. So I improved from 10 to almost 7. That, that's a pace of 7 per mile. I'm not doing it right now constantly, but it's, you know, always between 8 uh, and 9, sometimes 7. But my, my performance improved incredible and so did my cholesterol went down to 150 uh, combined good and the bad so and all my blood levels were perfect right there where they should be so i can only tell you a whole food plant-based lifestyle works for me and uh, i i hope i can help you to achieve the same again i'm not a doctor i cannot uh, i cannot give you medical advice but i know how to cook and i can show you um, how to cook, what to do, and uh, that's what I do. And I have, uh, I've had so many people along the way. Um, it's, it's, to me, my, my heart lights up when I see someone who says, hey, hey, chef, I, I left, I lost, I lost weight. Um, I feel so much better. This is what makes me glow. So, so to speak, that's, that makes me happy. Okay, good. So enough talking. Um, okay, so we are going to start with the falafel because they need to cook. 
uh, we're going to use this in a sort of a air fryer, uh, instant pot air fryer. And uh, then I'm going to tackle the uh, uh, red hummus, the red bean hummus. Okay, let me just see who is there and say hello to everyone. Okay. Hi, Neda. How are you? Oops. Okay, I have my computer here. Um, hi, Joel. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Mary. Thank you for your nice comments yesterday. I really appreciate it, Mary. Uh, hi, Janice. Hi, Deb. Hi, Jenna. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. <laughs> How are you? Martin is um, is a great chef I used to work with together in the city, in New York City. Great chef. So I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for stopping by. Okay. Good. I hope I... Didn't forget anyone here? Okay, good. Let's get going. We have our gabanzo beans. Just one, uh, I wanted to mention, when you do falafel, you should really use uh, dried beans. It works so much better, but uh, I don't have dried beans, so I, I used a, a different recipe because you cannot use one recipe for both. It doesn't work. Um, in order to bind the uh, the beans, you need to have some starch with it, either flour. Uh, I use oat flour, but you can use garbanzo, uh, garbanzo bean flour, um, whole wheat flour, whatever you like, you can use. But if you use dried beans, you just soak them overnight for 24 hours, and you don't cook them. That's the key. You don't want to cook them. And then you... Uh, proceed with the recipe. So the recipe I will give you today is for the canned beans, okay? This is one can. I'm gonna put it in the food processor. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, or half a lemon. Six cloves of garlic. About one small onion. Then I have a little bit of cardamom and uh, a little bit of uh, coriander, about a quarter teaspoon each. Then one teaspoon of uh, cumin. Roasted sesame seeds. Sorry, one uh, tablespoon. Okay. Just a little bit of cayenne, just a little dash, give it a little heat. Salt is optional. I just give it a little, you know, sea salt. Okay, and then we have the herbs. I have a half cup of dill, and I'm sorry, quarter cup of dill, about a half a cup of parsley, and a half a cup of cilantro. I have this all in here, and I'm going to. Pulse it up. I'm going to mix it up first before I put the flour in because I need to see how wet it is. I, I have about a quarter cup of old flour. Sometimes you need more, sometimes you need, you need less. It all depends how wet your herbs are. You can dry your herbs and you don't you need less. And, uh, okay. Break it down a little, and it looks great already. Don't think we need too much. What I did was I did uh, I dried the the garbanzo beans, made sure they're really dry, 
so I don't need to use too much flour. I don't like to make it too fine because you want to have a little bit of consistency. This is great already. You, you really don't need too much flour. I'm going to add just a little bit because I don't want my bunch of beans to fall apart later. is I should really put this mixture into um, the refrigerator and let it stand so that any kind of moisture comes out but I don't have the time to do this so I'm trying to attempt it without After you let it stand for a while, usually some liquid is coming out. But that's why I put the old flour in. Before I forget, you need to put one teaspoon of baking powder in. That makes the entire mixture a little bit more fluffy. So the mixture is quite nice and tight without any moisture, which is what we want. Now the moisture is coming out, I'm going to add a little bit more. I thought I could uh, cheat the system here, but it's not going to work. When you have dried beans, you can you don't need flour, but for this you need some kind of binding structure, some starch. Okay, good. So now we want to make little. Tiny little balls. Just like this. Um, the smaller, the better. Because um, they're not deep fried, they're air fried. So if we make them too big, they're going to take too long to cook. Okay? So, very, very important. Last thing, if we have a, a tiny little ice scooper, it will be perfect. Okay. Let's see if someone has any questions. Can uh, everyone hear me properly? Uh, if you can put a thumbs up in the in the box, if you can hear me, if the sound is good. So you could you could actually 
um, put a little breading outside, but I'm not going to do this in this case. You could put some uh, bread, uh, um, bread crumbs on the outside so it gets a little more crispier. But I think I'm not going to do this too. <clears throat> Turn on the air fryer already. So in this case, I it's it's hot when I place the falafel in there. always say I cook without oil, but in this case I just put a little bit of spray so that the falafel doesn't stick on it. This is the, uh, the insert for the uh, air fryer. We have two nuggets in here, but I, I'm only going to use one. Just going to put them in here. One more. And that's it. Okay, now I'm going to put it in the air fryer. It's going to turn it, take it off. You have to be careful, it's very hot from the inside. And I have it set for 10 minutes. Usually it tells me halfway around. I should uh, turn it. I will take a look at it if you have time. Okay. I'll finish this later. Okay. Good. Now we want to do the, uh, the hummus. Hummus is, uh, I love hummus. It's, I eat hummus actually quite a lot. I eat it for breakfast or as a snack. Um, I, what I like to do is, uh, I, I like to have a little whole grain bread, put some hummus on it, some guacamole on it, uh, sometimes some tabouleh on, on top of it. Um, it tastes great. It's, uh, that's what I like. Okay. Okay, we have uh, a can of white beans. This time, you can you can actually make a hummus from from any kind of beans. You can make it from black beans. Uh, there, there's no limit to what you can do, even from soybeans. It's uh, hummus is, is fantastic. The sky's the limit. Good. This time, I already cooked the uh, uh, rabbit, and uh, you can buy. Red beet in a can, that's fine. I would I would go with uh, organic red beets because red beets, most red beets have been uh, gene manipulated already, so I, I would go with uh, organic ones. Okay. I have about a quarter cup of uh, tiny salt. You know, tiny salt is, 
you know, some people like it, some don't. I'm not really a big fan of tiny souls, but I put it in anyway. It's uh, everyone else in my family likes it. Then we have half a teaspoon of uh, smoked paprika and one teaspoon of cumin. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of heat, a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper. And of course, our lemon juice, or oh, it's juice of half a lemon. And the garlic. I usually put one, maybe maximum two gloves in, otherwise, it becomes too, too strong. And I, I don't like this flavor. I like garlic, but not when it tastes spicy. That's it's not gonna do justice. Okay, salt. Salt obviously is optional. For you, some of you who eat no salt, so not put salt in. Okay. See how the beets are giving it some color. Beets is such a fantastic vegetable. It's, it's, it has so much antioxidants. Uh, it's fantastic. Very, very healthy. Very healthy. For all of you who are into running or doing some kind of sport, if you eat the dish with uh, red beets the day before or you just three, four hours before, it will increase your performance. So red beets um, is fantastic for, for athletes, but for anyone. Okay. Let's taste it. See how it tries. Yeah. A little bit more lemon juice. So that brings it up to one, one whole lemon. It all depends how big your lemon is and how much juice each lemon has. Here's another, another trick. Next time, when, when you go buy lemons or oranges or any citrus fruit for this matter, <clears throat> don't look how the lemons look. Look at the weight. So take the lemons and feel them. The ones which are heavier have the most juice. That's how you know that uh, your lemon has a lot of juice. Okay? So. Obviously, you want to look for, for any marks that are that have mild you or whatever. Obviously, okay. The air fryer tells me it's halfway done. Just gonna take a look. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wanna let it in. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. I'll close this here again. A little bit more salt and. I like a little Tabasco in my food. I don't know if Martin is still there, but uh, <clears throat> Martin knows that I always use Tabasco in my food. Not because to make the food spicier, but Tabasco 
brings out the natural flavor in any dish. So next time when you cook something and you, you don't, if something is missing, just add a dash or two of, of Tabasco. Not because of the spice, but the Tabasco brings out the, the natural fruit, uh, fruit flavor out of the food. It's fantastic. Okay, good. Let's see who joined us here. <laughs> Hi, Janice. Um, okay, yes, yes, yes. Hi, Stefan. How are you? Nice for stopping by. Okay, good. This is... This is your... You see? Red beet hummus. I love it. I love this stuff. It's so healthy. So healthy. Okay, I can't wait. So the falafel come out, but they're going to take another 10 minutes. So in the meanwhile, let me just clean up a little bit here. <clears throat> okay, so this was nine minutes. And I want to show you how they look like. It's hot. <clears throat> Just gonna put one on the plate. They're not ready. Maybe. Beautiful, aren't they? Beautiful. Aren't they beautiful? Okay, so what I like to do is I like to serve the falafel which is nice and green, even inside, with a little red bead hummus. I'm gonna do this. Yes. Right in the center. And Add a little bit of cilantro, just as a decoration. You see, um, you can do this as an appetizer. You can uh, use it as um, as an hors d'oeuvre. You could do that. You could serve it if you have uh, guests coming in and uh, you want to surprise them with, with a little um, dish, it, it always is colorful. It makes, I think it makes a statement, even though it's so easy, so uncomplicated, so easy to cook. Um, and it doesn't even take 15 minutes to do both of them, or 20 minutes. So I'm looking forward to eat this. I know my son is looking forward. He always waits. Okay, uh, let me see if there's any questions. Hi, Susanna. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. Okay, need more vegan options when on vacation there. Yeah, I'm telling you. Um, you see, when it comes to vegan options, that's, you know, very often when I travel, I come to restaurants and 
you haven't even heard of it really. So <laughs> it happens. So even in Germany, where we have, uh, you know, the vegan scene is big, really, really big. But when you come to certain areas, they have never heard about it. Um, very simple. You just ask for the menu. You know, it, it makes no sense to ask them, hey, you have anything for vegans? What? Yeah, yeah, forget about it. Don't even get into that. Just um, look at the menu and see at all the vegetables they serve. Not only the side vegetables they, they, they sell you, but the vegetables they have on the dish. For instance, they have a steak with mashed potatoes and sauteed spinach. Well, the mashed potatoes, they're probably made with butter, so forget about those. The spinach is made with butter, most likely. But you can all they have spinach in the house. So you can ask them, you, you continue to look what else they have. Um, they might have carrots, they might have beans. And uh, so you pick all these vegetables out. And then you call the waiter and you ask them, hey, listen, if there's any chance, can you put me a meal together? Spinach, potatoes, uh, some beans, some mushrooms, because 99% of all restaurants have these. And very often they're not cooked. They're cooked into order. So you very often get a meal what is absolutely fresh. And if you have a chef who cares, I'm telling you, you get the meal of your lifetime. Um, and that they don't even have on the menu. So this is just a little trick how you get really, really good food in a restaurant. You know, I, I, who is better to tell you than me who's, who's working in a kitchen for so long? Martin knows too. He's, um, he has been cooking for a long, long time. It's, uh, it's, if you know a few tricks and the, the restaurant is not overly crazy busy, you should be able to get your food. Okay, good. Um, let me put this aside here. I, I promise you I'm going to make an impromptu meal, which I haven't planned, and I'm, but I'm going to show it to you. Just, let me just clean up a little bit here. And as I said before, there's, there's, we have so many um, options we can cook and we're not even aware of it. So th th uh, let me just go, um, start again. Uh, one of the questions was how uh, I don't have any recipes. I don't know what to cook. So my thinking is if you, if you think like a chef, then you avoid looking for recipes and, and, and going crazy. Oh, what, what can I cook now? If I, if I can show you the basics, then you can create out of these uh, basics hundreds of different of recipes. So, and uh, this, this is the trick. This is how I cook. You know, I do cook at, I do look at recipes and I do get some inspirations from it, absolutely. But uh, I always try to put my own touch to it. Okay. Uh, let's get a pen here. And obviously, as I promised, it's uh, oil free cooking. Okay, get some power here. Okay, what I have here, I have a few. I found a few mushrooms, I found an onion, um, spinach, I found some black beans, and you know, most of us have some kind of vegetables in the house. And it's, it's very important, when you cook, you want to have a little bit of everything. You want to have some greeny, green leafy vegetables, you want some starchy vegetables, your legumes, and you want some non starchy vegetables, like this here, okay? So when you mix the three of them, you have a complete nutrition picture, meaning um, you, you will get enough protein, you will get enough 
carbs and enough fat in your food. Even though I cook without oil, there's fat in, in the spinach. There's fat in almost every vegetable, very small amounts. Like for instance, spinach has omega-3s. Who knew? But uh, obviously you have to eat a lot in order to get enough. But there is fat in almost every vegetable. Good, okay. And I, I could have picked any kind of vegetable. I could have picked beans, broccoli, um, it doesn't matter. What I do is I always start with an onion and garlic. That's how I start my meal. That's how I've been trained in French cuisine. And uh, I stuck with this. I, I think it works. It uh, adds flavor to any dish. Cut these in little slices. Cut it off, beautiful. I washed the mushrooms early on. Maybe one more garlic. So, and when you cook for yourself, when you're at home, this is what you need to do. Don't be afraid. You know, there's nothing you can cook. This it's very simple. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get the flavor in. Because the flavor, in the end, is what, what counts when you, uh, when you finish your meal. Obviously, the nutrition is as important. Good, okay, so you see, I did not put oil in. The onions turning to get uh, a little brown, meaning the caramelizing. So I'm adding a little bit of water to it. Do you see? All the brown is gone. It's actually in the juice, in the, in the water. So this is how I compound the flavor in my dish. Okay. So I don't need to use um, broth all the time because I have a little mini broth here. That's what I just created with it. So this is the garlic, the onions. Smell. It, it's almost no difference if you as if you would cook with oil. Obviously, yes, oil is more um, satiating for sure. It adds uh, easily 250 calories for two spoons, two tablespoons. So uh, that's 250 calories you could be eating more with that. Food. Okay, now I'm going to cut my mushrooms. Now what I like to do is when I once I have my mushrooms in here, I'm going to add some uh, Indian or Asian inspired spices. A little bit of turmeric because I, I love turmeric. It's healthy, very very healthy. It uh, has anti anti cancer. Uh, components in here. Uh, some curry. Not too much, just a little bit, just to give it a little flavor. Here's my tabasco. The smell, just incredible. To me, mushrooms, turmeric and curry, or curry, just fit like incredible. They're a good pair. Okay, I have my tomato here. My tomato is out of my own garden. Okay. Okay. Just gonna cut it in dices. Again, I'm not trying to copy any kind of recipe. I'm doing my own dish. So 
Don't be afraid to put anything in your dish. In the end, you have to like it and you have to, uh, you will appreciate what flavor you get out of it. Uh, I understand that if you, you know, when I get asked, where are the recipes? What are the recipes? Um, when you cook a lasagna or when you cook or when you bake cake, you need a recipe for sure. You don't need a recipe for lasagna, but you know, there are certain dishes, you just need a recipe. And I understand that this is uh, like for the falafel, you need a recipe. Um, I understand. But when it comes to simple food, like a vegetable stew, you do not need a recipe. And that, this, this is all I'm trying to convey is, you know, I'm not saying you should eat it every day, but to me, a vegetable stew is one of the most delicious things I can have. Simply because it's natural. It's just vegetables, nothing else. I didn't put oil in. Uh, it, I just saute it for a few minutes and that's it. And I have all the nutrients in here I need. I add, add about a cup of beans to it, black beans. I can use any kind of beans. I cook. And when they're heated up, I'm going to put my spinach in. I'm going to season it again. And that's it. And I can serve it with, uh, with a little mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, quinoa. Uh, Rice, brown rice, the sky's the limit. Okay, let's see if we have any more. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. Deb is saying it was interesting how you chop the onion quicker than how I do it. Okay, I want you to be careful when you when you chop your onion. Don't cut yourself. In the beginning of my career, I cut myself so often it wasn't fun anymore. But after a while, you get used to it. Okay. So we have this. Point at the little spinach to it. A little bit of sorry, what I say? Okay, a little bit. And that's it. So you can serve it with a little, again, as I said, rice, potatoes. That's it. This is what I eat on a weekend for breakfast. Um, it's just fantastic. Fantastic. I, I don't eat anything else. I eat a big bowl. Just like that. And you feel so good after eating this. Okay, let's get a plate. Thank you. You see here, very simple, no oil, my pan is not burned or anything, and remember the juice you have here, this, that's where the vitamins are, so you want to make sure you eat all the salt in here. Okay, can you see? You see that sauce in here? That's where the vitamins are. Very important. You can have a slice of uh, whole wheat bread if you wanted to, and just scoop it all up. Um, beautiful. You can even have a little guacamole on the side. Um, There's so many options. So and this is just one version of a vegetable stew, just one. You, there are hundreds of different versions of a vegetable stew. 
You can even make your own spice mixtures from a curry, like a vegetable curry. It's a stew, but you can do it with any kind of different spices. You don't have to use these spices. You can use basil or oregano. Um, you, you, there's, there's no limit what you can use. Rosemary, for instance, is great. You can even mix these with roasted potatoes or roast your potatoes first and then mix it together. Um, there, there is just no limit to it, how you can make your dishes. Uh, try it, try it at home and, and see how you like it. Obviously, if you don't like Indian spices, it's fine. Then you wouldn't like that, but you can do it with different spices. With, with, as I said, oregano, basil, and um, see if you like it. And you will never be without food, never. Because you always know how to help yourself. Just, just make sure you have your basic foods in the house. You have a, a few cans of beans in the house. You have quinoa, you have brown rice, um, buckwheat. When you have those things in the house, everything is great. And then you have your onions, you have your garlic, mushrooms, spinach. I always have spinach in the house. I love spinach. Um, pep uh, peppers, great. So if you have a garden, you know, you all set. You have eggplant, peppers, zucchini, um, tomatoes. You're all right now in season. You could live from this all summer now. So that's what I do. And um, I, I hope this helped you in order to, you know, if you don't have a recipe handy, this is what you can do. Obviously, if you want to go really out and, and, and go extra, I want to impress your guests. Yes, then you need bigger uh, inspirations, like uh, big recipes, whatever it is. Um, but just for yourself, to feed yourself, or feed your family, you know, in a in a rush. This is the to me that's the perfect recipe. Okay, good. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions. Yeah, Stefan said uh, spicy breakfast. Absolutely. Put some uh, pepper red pepper flakes in. Put some uh, hot sauce on it. You know, I I actually have. Um, hot peppers out in the garden growing, and I should have brought some in some. They are really nice and red. Beautiful, beautiful. Just make sure you take the seeds out, or you're gonna be on fire. So that's that's great. Um, yeah, good point, Stefan. Um, yes, uh, Stefan asks if he can eat as much as he want. Yes, you can. Uh, there is no calorie counting. There is no calorie counting as long you don't eat oil, and as long as you, you don't eat animal foods, there's no calorie content. Keep, keep in mind, when you uh, cook your vegetables or when you eat your vegetables, none of those vegetables have more than 600 calories per pound. This, this, is, this is not even a pound of vegetables. This is far less. But um, what I'm saying is, even if you eat two pounds, which I very often I eat two pounds at, in one sitting, um, I probably have 400 calories because 600 calories you have is avocados. With these ones, like broccoli has 150, spinach has 150, um, beans have more, I think 250, 300. Um, you cannot reach 1,000 calories, which you can, you go to McDonald's, you get in one meal, you get 1,500 calories with your french fries and your double burger, whatever, whatever it is. So, you can eat as much as you want. And the beauty is, when you're full, you're full. Your, 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 your body tells you, hey, I got enough. And you will not get fat from this because this stuff is digested in no time. So, okay. So I, I, talk, I guess I talked enough today. Um, Arby, hi, Arby. Go vegan and what? <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, what else we have? Okay. Looks good. Can I imagine how it smells? I love everything in it. Well, I can't say I have used curry powder before. Um, well, give it a try. Don't use too much. Don't 
overly just use a little bit in the beginning. And uh, uh, one one I might have to tell you about legumes. If you never had legumes like lentils or uh, peas or beans, start slowly. Because if you eat too much, you, you overburden your intestines, your your digestive system. Because um, when you go vegan, you um, develop these micro uh, organisms in your your gut bacteria, and you accumulate them over time. So if you eat too much lentils, legumes. Um, you, you, you might have, you know, you feel a little, I'm too full, whatever. But once you start slowly, you get into it, you, you should not have an issue. Okay, good. Um, I think that's it for me. Let me, actually, I I promised you uh, tofu replacement. And this is really your tofu replacement. Beans. Any any kind of starchy vegetables, um, anything, you know, we all, this is another pet peeve of mine. We, we all trying to um, make dishes which remind us of what we cooked in our early days. It reminds us of our beef days, of our chicken days, when we, when we had all that fried chicken. Um, I want to get away from that. That's my personal opinion. You don't have to. Uh, if you like to eat uh, sausages or, or you know plant-based sausages, that's fine. But here and there, it's okay, and I, I eat them too. But I try to get away from it because this is what keeps us in the same tribe. You know, every time we eat something similar to the fried chicken, to the chicken stew, the beef stew, or the steak, whatever it is, uh, it reminds us of what we used to eat. And in order to eat whole food plant-based, you want to get away from that. So the whole vegetable is what you want to aim for, and not the processed food that you buy in the supermarket, but tastes similar to, well, Italian sausage. So, and that's what I'm trying to get away with. And very often we try to do the same with tofu, you know, because tofu adapts any flavor you put it in. Um, so instead of tofu, just use uh, starchy vegetables like legumes, like peas, like lentils, like, you know, these are the vegetables, sweet potatoes. Um, that's what you put in your dish. There's, uh, there's just, if you, if you cannot eat soy, then just let it out and focus on other whole foods. That's all I can say. Okay, good. Um, that's it for me. One more thing. Um, I'd like to announce the, um, the challenge because uh, as you all saw in the uh, uh, private Facebook group, I put out a poll and so far the weight loss challenge has won. And I think it's going to stay this way because it's, I think it's at um, 10 more votes than any other uh, category. So I'm um, going to go with the 10 point uh, weight loss challenge. But that doesn't mean that the other challenge is um, not really, it's obsolete. When I do the 10 pound weight loss challenge, anyone can participate, even if you don't want to lose too much weight. You, you're getting into uh, something really special. You, you, are, you are getting together with a big group of people who, are all, who all have the same goal of, yes, losing weight, but also going whole food plant based because that's the key here. In order to lose weight, you need to go whole food plant based. Not plant based, whole food plant based. And that's what the challenge is about. Okay, so I'm so excited about it, and uh, I hope uh, all of you will join. And, uh, that's it for me today. I thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next week, Thursday, 1 p.m. If you have any questions, please feel free 
to uh, to mention them there. Uh, if you liked it, if you liked it, please um, give it a thumbs up. That would be really appreciated. And uh, I'll see you next week. And of course, I'll see you in the private uh, Facebook community. And uh, see you then. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's see if we have some. Oh, yeah. Deb said, I have George's Swiss chard growing right now. It's beautiful. It's pretty strong and a little sour in salads, but I haven't cooked it yet. Does it change flavor when you cook it? Actually, Swiss chard, uh, Swiss chard is like spinach. It wilts and it, it almost disappears. But the flavor is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's, uh, I add a few onions or garlic to it. And cut it in, in, in stripes, in, yeah, in uh, stripes, not strips, and saute it, salt and pepper. That's it. Beautiful. Try it. You can even try it all just like this. You could do the same dish with this one. I have Swiss chard in my, in my garden too. So in, instead of the spinach, I would put Swiss chard. So that's uh, it, it's beautiful, very healthy, great. Okay, thank you so much everyone. See you next week.